Hi, and welcome to Cytobank's Citrus tutorial. My name is Jeff Krecker, and I'm an application scientist at Cytobank. Today we'll be talking about what Citrus is, how it works, and other new improvements we've recently made to Cytobank. So, first off, what is Cytobank? Cytobank is a web-based analysis, archiving, collaboration tool uh, designed around cytometry data. So, we have high-dimensional analysis, tools like Visni, Spade, and now Citrus. We have structured content management, which includes uh, collaboration tools and archiving. Uh, we also have consulting services. So uh, if you have a lot of data that you've acquired and need help analyzing, or you'd like help designing SOPs or uh, protocols or analysis pipelines, we'd be happy to help out with that. So what is Citrus? Citrus uh, uh, was debuted with, by this paper uh, from Rob Brugner et al. Uh, basically, it's an algorithm that leverages unsupervised clustering and supervised predictive and correlative statistical association models to call out significant feature differences between experimental groups. Uh, that's some flowery language, <laughs> and uh, what does it really mean? Citrus lets you compare groups of samples and not only tells you what parameters make those groups different, but how significant those differences are. And after identifying nodes of interest with uh, Citrus, you can then export the events in those nodes to a new Cytobank experiment for further analysis, either manually or with other algorithms. So what are the applications of Citrus? Uh, it's great for things like biomarker discovery, uh, when you have a whole group of healthy patients and a whole group of, uh, for instance, lupus patients, and you say, what, what are the differences between these two groups? Uh, go for it, Citrus, and it'll go through and either pull out the single most defining characteristic or difference between these two groups, uh, or it'll tell you all the, the differences it picks up between those two groups, given uh, the parameters you ask it for. So uh, that's one example. Uh, clinical or preclinical trials, uh, or any reason you need to compare groups as opposed to individual samples. Visney and Spade are great algorithms for looking at the heterogeneity inside of a sample. Uh, and with Spade, you can do a full change characteristic um, to look at uh, small uh, scale comparisons. Uh, but uh, really, uh, Citrus fills a gap uh, in looking at uh, large group-wise comparisons. So Citrus begins by identifying uh, clusters of phenotypically similar cells uh, in all the samples in the experiment in a hierarchical, unsupervised manner. Uh, this basically is the step that's very similar to Spade. So it goes through and, and puts similar cells uh, across whatever dimensions you select into nodes, uh, and then uh, puts those nodes onto a tree structure. After it does that, it uses regularized supervised learning algorithms to identify stratifying clusters and cell response features that are the best predictors of a known experimental endpoint of interest. So what that means is it takes a look at all these nodes and says uh, which of these nodes change uh, when you're looking at these two groups um, and which one um, is, shows the biggest difference either in uh, medians or in abundance. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So. This is a, a little cartoon, uh, a brief uh, cartoon showing uh, kind of how this works. So uh, there's group one, which are non-responders, and group two, which are responders. Group one has just feature one. Uh, group two has two more features, but uh, feature two is, is higher expression, uh, or there's more of it uh, in that group. Uh, feature two um, is the strongest um, uh, differentiator, or the, the most defined feature. Um, uh, of difference between these two groups. Uh, feature three is also, yes, it's also a difference, um, but uh, not quite as strong as feature two. So this will come into play in, in a little bit. Uh, that first paper that, that I put up the reference for um, uh, has an accompanying data set, and we have this data set on our servers uh, for you to try out Citrus with. Uh, essentially, it's PBMCs. Uh, eight are unstimulated. Eight of the samples are unstimulated. Eight of the samples are stimulated with B-cell receptor cross-linking. This is a good time to mention that uh, Citrus uh, needs at least eight samples per uh, group in order to have uh, enough statistical power to be confident in the result. Uh, you can try it with less, but again, that makes the results uh, a little bit more shaky. So just keep that in mind. So I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, you could either do um, medians or abundance. So Citrus has uh, a few different modes. Uh, one of these is uh, what you want to compare. So medians would be, um, compare medians would be a functional marker, for instance. Uh, things like uh, phosphate signaling. Uh, and, and in this experiment, this data we're going to be looking at, uh, that's the case. So you say, um, what changes in my channel um, between these two groups? Or you can look at abundances. So you can say, what changes um, in my uh, number of events in my nodes between these two experiments? So if you 
gain or lose a population that would be looking for abundance differences. Regardless of which mode you select um, or in which association model you use, which we'll talk about um, coming up next, um, you'll get these marker plots as part of the results. So the results of Citrus uh, are presented to you as a file to download. Uh, there'll be several PDFs and a couple CSV files, which are uh, spreadsheet files. Uh, regardless, like I said, of what, uh, what kind of Citrus you're doing, you'll get these marker plots. And they basically show you the expression level of all the channels you used to create the tree um, layered on top of the tree in a heat map-like fashion. So you can see where um, each of your, your populations of interest uh, exist. So in this case, uh, you can see this branch is the CD4 branch of the tree. Uh, this node down here is the CD33 positive node. Now it looks a lot like a spade tree, but the, the one large difference is that uh, this tree is hierarchical, um, similar to uh, kind of traditional gating, uh, wherein all the events uh, in this node are also in this node, and all the events in this node are in this node, and so on, all the way back up to the original. So you can see these little arrows um, that point um, down the hierarchy. So each of these end nodes on these branches is the most uh, phenotypically pure population. So I mentioned this uh, just, just uh, back then. Uh, there's three different association models in Citrus, uh, and these are kind of like three different modes you can run. You can run them all at the same time if you'd like, um, but basically uh, they uh, allow you to go through and, and choose uh, which um, kind of model you'd like to use. Uh, if you have um, no idea what either of these mean, you can go to our support site, which is support.cytobank.org, uh, and check out the little definitions of each of these. Um, there's also, um, if you have a computational biologist or a bioinformatician uh, that you have access to, uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to explain the differences between these as well. Um, so uh, essentially, uh, SAM is a, a correlative association model, and there's no limit to the number of groups you can use. Uh, PAM is a predictive model, so uh, given, given two groups, it's able to predict which group uh, a new sample should go into. Um, and again, there's no limit to groups uh, for PAM. Uh, and then last would be a GlimNet. Uh, it's also predictive like PAM, uh, but it's limited to just two groups. So it's possible uh, if you have just two groups to run all three at once, or if you have more than two groups to run the first two um, and receive the results in that download file I was talking about. So you're not limited to one option. Um, I would suggest, though, to start out with PAM uh, because it gives you um, a, uh, basically a data quality graph. And that's what this is. So um, it gives you this graph as kind of a QC check on how likely it is the results of this run are supposed to be valid. Um, some takeaway points here. It's a pretty informationally dense graph. Uh, but uh, things to pay attention to. Uh, number one is this cross-validation error rate line. Um, what this means is uh, at... At, uh, during during the, the Citrus calculation, um, at several points, it'll, uh, and it's five by default, it'll take a subset of your data out from the set it was building the model uh, against, and then compare that to the model it was built. Um, and this basically is to ensure that uh, the model it's building is accurate, um, taking into account several subsets of your data. So what you want to look for is this cross-validation error rate to drop to zero. Uh, if it doesn't drop to zero, that's an indication uh, that potentially the, the mode you're running, either abundance or um, median, uh, that mode might not be appropriate uh, for uh, what the data looks like um, or that the run has just, uh, has just failed. Another thing to look for uh, is that uh, this feature false discovery rate, um, uh, this is set uh, by default uh, to 1%. So when this blue line gets above 1%, um, that's where this uh, false discovery rate constrained version of the results is generated. There's also two other versions of the results, CVMIN and CV1SE. Um, and I'll have a, I have a definition slide of these coming up, but essentially uh, there's three different versions and CVMIN and CV1SE uh, signify um, the single strongest predictor um, of the difference between these two groups. Um, so if you're looking for just the one um, uh, the one strongest reason why these two groups are different, uh, that's indicated by uh, the PDFs from the CVMIN or the CV1SE. Uh, it might be more than one feature, but it's the lowest number of features uh, that describe the difference between two groups. Um, the FDR constrained version of the results, however, displays results uh, for all of the differences between two groups. Um, so instead of just the single or the, the lower, lowest number of uh, features, the strongest features to describe the difference between the two groups, 
uh, FDR constrained will tell you everything that's different. So some things to look for here is that these um, CV min and CV one SC uh, don't appear on this zero, this Y axis line right here. That means that the algorithm has decided it doesn't need any features to describe the difference between two groups. Um, and then it's just random chance, um, and that's likely to be an invalid result. So uh, takeaway points, make sure your cross-validation error rate drops to zero at some point, and make sure that uh, CV, and CV min and CV1SE are um, uh, away, at some point, away from this, this zero y-axis. So like I said, three different versions of the PDF results. Uh, CV min is the model with the lowest cross-validation error rate. CV1SC is uh, the model with the lowest cross-validation error within one standard error. And FDR constrained is uh, all of, uh, dis or displays the results from all the different features below the false discovery rate. Uh, and you can set uh, what you want that false discovery rate to be, that cutoff to be. By default, it's 1%, um, but uh, again, it's variable. So the PDFs you'll get, besides the uh, marker plots, which shows you the phenotype, and the uh, data quality graph, you'll also get um, something called uh, feature plots. And this goes through and it shows you, instead of a phenotype of the nodes, it shows you which nodes um, exhibit the, that feature or that strongest feature of the differences between your groups. Uh, in this case, for this data set we're talking about, uh, it's the, the phospho S6 median of this node, which is the B cells. If you look over at the FDR constrained version, it's both that single strongest feature but also all these other differences. So the phospho AKT of the T helper cells and myeloid, uh, that's uh, one version. You can look at phospho ERK of this myeloid region down here, phospho STAT1 of this helper T cell um, on this branch. So um, the FDR constrained version of the results are a great tool for uh, discovery, um, hypothesis generation, going through and seeing what kind of off-target effects um, are happening. Um, but uh, as a reminder, with FDR constrained and with the traditional uh, results in, in Citrus, it's uh, best to go back and use more traditional methods to confirm these results. Another PDF you'll get is a, um, basically a set of histograms describing the phenotype of um, that node or that small set of nodes um, from whatever version you're looking at. In this case, it's the CV min. Um, and we can see here that the most significant node or that that feature was uh, on that node with the CD20 positive uh, was HLADR positive and IgM positive so it's very likely that node uh, contains B cells. Here's what the result for the FDR constrained version looks like it's all these different uh, sets of histograms. Uh, lastly the the last uh, uh, PDF we'll get is a uh, a little set of box plot uh, box plot singular for the CV min or, or many box plots for the FDR constrained version uh, that show you the transformed median values um, compared to each other um, uh, on this little uh, plot here. So uh, you can see uh, there is uh, quite a difference between the reference samples and the stimulated samples in the median of phospho S6. And lastly, you get a little uh, CSV file um, with these values displayed in the box plot. Um, just written down for you to take on a further statistical analysis if you'd like. After you pull out your, uh, your nodes or your populations of interest uh, with Citrus, or after you find them, you can select those, uh, those nodes you want to take into a new cytobank experiment um, for, uh, for, again, uh, uh, manual analysis for confirmation, um, or you can download them uh, to your computer after you export them to a new experiment uh, for integration into another piece of your pipeline. So um, it's, it's uh, a very flexible tool for uh, both finding um, these interesting populations and then being able to work with them after. If you're interested in seeing Citrus uh, work kind of in a, a more real world data set than just eight stem and eight unstem PBMCs, uh, take a look at this paper. Um, it's actually a, a really interesting look at how um, some people uh, when undergoing hip replacement surgery recover very quickly um, both in uh, decrease in pain and increase in function. And some people take a lot longer. Um, and uh, they attempted to uh, make a, a test, a blood test, to be able to predict um, which group, uh, which people or which patients were in each group so they could um, uh, kind of uh, dispense resources appropriately. So it's a good read if you've got some time to, uh, to spare to, uh, to read uh, things about citrus. So now on to some other new developments inside a bank. Uh, 
we recently fixed um, kind of a, a longstanding uh, request uh, from many customers uh, and um, uh, for, for tailoring across populations. And this was, uh, if for instance, you were looking for um, a readout in a functional marker from several different populations, you'd have to draw several gates on the same plot. Now we've changed it to be a more traditional uh, gating mode where you can just move uh, a gate around and tailor it per parent population. So you can put the gate in one place for B cells, put the gate in a different place for T cells and a different place for monocytes, and you don't need to make three gates. Uh, citrus, we've just talked about. Um, and then uh, lastly, we have uh, recently introduced uh, Cytobank, uh, the, the Cytobank API. So th the API, the Application Programming Interface, is uh, for those uh, more computationally inclined people, like uh, bioinformaticians or computational biologists or people who like to dabble uh, in, uh, in dealing with uh, the computer side of uh, cytometry analysis. And it allows you to programmatically interact with uh, the Cytobank software, so you don't have to click around in the user interface. You can send Cytobank uh, basically a, a script or a set of commands, and it'll execute those for you and then uh, return those results. So right now, it's set up to handle things like uploading data, downloading data, um, getting information about uh, data that's already on Cytobank, some simple stats exports, uh, and soon we're releasing an update that will allow you to kick off Visney, Spade, Citrus, and large stats export runs. Um, so if you would like more information about uh, Cytobank's API or any of the other things I've talked about today, uh, please get in touch uh, at support.cytobank.org. Um, is a great way to both get information about the, the uh, hardcore details of the math behind Citrus uh, or um, kind of examples of how to use it, um, or about our documentation site for our API. You can also hop in and talk to us at our uh, chat room, cytobank.campfirenow.com slash fe081. Uh, we'd love to uh, hear your questions and comments there. Uh, you can always, again, email me at jeff at cytobank.org. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll hop into the software, and I'll show you what it actually looks like uh, to run a Citrus on this data set. So here uh, is one of the Citrus demo uh, tutorial experiments. Um, we'll, you'll have this on your server as well. So you can uh, make a copy of it and, uh, and, and follow along if you'd like. So uh, it's a good idea um, either um, in your own data that you upload or in here it's already done for you, but to clean up the data a little bit um, to get rid of debris, doublets, and dead cells. Um, just like for Visnia Spade, um, the algorithm will run much cleaner if you give it uh, a clean data to start with. So we'll come up to Citrus and click New Citrus Analysis. Give it a name. And then we're presented with a setup page. And this will look uh, a little similar to the Spade or Visney setup page, but there's uh, a few more options. Uh, again, uh, you've probably gathered by now Citrus is a little bit more complex than those other algorithms we've, uh, uh, we've put on Cytobank. So the first section up here is uh, essentially building the tree. Um, what starting population do you want to use? Again, um, a clean one is great, but you can use a narrower subpopulation if you want to, uh, if you want to see um, a more specific uh, subset of your cells. Here we'll choose the clustering channels, the, tr the channels we want to use to build the structure of the tree, uh, just like in Spade. So generally I recommend people start off with phenotyping markers. Uh, and that keeps it simple, although functional markers are um, t absolutely suitable as well. Just uh, know how those will change the tree structure um, as you progress. Things to avoid are things uh, like um, DNA uh, channels or um, cell extrinsic markers like cell length or time, uh, and also linearly scaled channels, things like uh, forward and side scatter. Um, those will either um, add no information to the run or at worst swamp uh, because they're scaled, in, or they're scaled differently. Uh, they'll swamp the results and it'll scale um, or cluster only by um, uh, scatter instead of all of your other interesting markers. So um, again, just do uh, bi-exponential uh, ArcSNH uh, scaled uh, data um, at once or all linear channels at once. Um, in this case, we're just using our, our surface markers and uh, some non-CD markers here, and we're all done. Next, we have to set up our file groups. So you get to add a comma-separated list of group names. We'll keep it simple here, uh, stim and unstim. 
And then you can search up here. Again, Citrus allows you to, or encourages you to use a lot of samples. So this search box can uh, come in handy. Uh, we'll search for reference, assign them all to the unstim. And we'll search for our BCR and add them all to the stimulated group. And just like that, we've got all of them annotated. Uh, next up, you want to make sure your compensation is set if you're using fluorescent data. Um, just like Visnia Spade, it's sensitive to compensation artifacts. So definitely make sure that your compensation is as, is as clean as you can get it. Um, again, this particular data is CITOF data, so we don't have to worry about it. Here's where you can choose which association models you'd like to use. Uh, I'm just using uh, PAM for this one because it has a little bit more user-friendly output uh, at the beginning, but any of these would work because we have, again, only two groups. We'll be doing, instead of abundance, we'll be using medians, and I wanna look for the difference or the change between these two groups in all of my phospho signaling markers. So I'll search by P to pull up all the phosphos and then uh, select all of them. We have an option to choose how we wanna sample our events. So you can either choose equal, which will take the, the number of events in your smallest file um, from all of your files, uh, or you can say vary your numbers uh, per file. Um, it's your choice. So you can see here how many events will be sampled per file. Um, the minimum cluster size. In this case, we're looking for B cells out of CD45 positives. So 5% is totally appropriate. Uh, if you're looking for rarer cell types, uh, you can lower this uh, by all means uh, to be a little bit more um, discerning. Cross-validation folds. Uh, this is the number of times it takes a subset of your data out and compares it against the model it's building. If you'd like to be more rigorous, you can increase this. If you'd like uh, to run a little bit faster, you can decrease this. And then false discovery rate. I've talked about this beforehand, but um, if you increase the false discovery rate percentile, that means your FDR constrained results will have uh, more uh, features in them, but also there's a larger chance that you might get a coincidental result um, if you want a little bit more rigorous uh, or a, you know, less chance uh, to have uh, a false uh, you know, a coincidental finding, you can decrease this rate. Uh, and then your FDR constrained uh, version of the results will, be, um, will have fewer models or features in it. Normalized scales is an option, especially um, you should consider if you have um, a large difference in dynamic range on fluorescent data. Uh, mass cytometry data has less uh, differences in dynamic range between channels, so um, we're not gonna select it this time. And then there's also um, an aesthetic option, whether you'd like a light or dark theme plots. So after you've chosen all of those, you can then go down and uh, click the Run Citrus Analysis link. Uh, and that will start the analysis. It'll send it to the server. Um, we'll spin up a computer in the back and start working on it. So again, none of this is running on uh, your device, whether it's a phone or a laptop or a PC. Um, all the work is happening back on our server, so you can close your browser, turn off your computer, and it will email you when it's done. If you do leave this window up, uh, when it's complete, it'll refresh and show you uh, a download link for the results, uh, and also a uh, export to new experiment link uh, to let you choose which clusters to bring into a new Cytobank experiment. So instead of waiting uh, for this to bake, you know, like, uh, like on a cooking show, you put this casserole in the oven, I'm going to take uh, <laughs> a completed citrus run uh, and show you what that looks like. So um, if uh, we'll come up here and click on uh, our, our other tab, you can see that here's a uh, download results link and uh, an option to export uh, whatever clusters from this experiment we want uh, to a new experiment. So if we look at what the download uh, generates. It gives you a, um, a file with some uh, R data in it. And again, these are just logs basically for how the run went on the server. Uh, and inside the default condition folder is where the results are. You get uh, marker plots, um, either a kind of a miniaturized version with all the trees on one page uh, or larger trees, uh, you know, one per page in the PDF to see what the phenotype looks like. So in this case, uh, CD20, this is the B cell uh, node right here. So we could keep an eye on that one. This is also where the, th the other versions of the association models uh, results will show up. Um, in this case, we just ran PAM, so there's only one file, uh, but you'll see other versions up here. The 
the PAM results uh, are comprised of uh, a couple different PDFs, like I mentioned before, I showed you in the, the slideshow. Um, there's CV1SE, the clusters, the clusters from the FDR constrained, and clusters from the CV min. And because the CV1SE and CV min were just a single feature, they were in the same place, uh, this is what the phenotype is. You can see CD20, HLADR, IgM. That's uh, a very good indicator that um, the B cell node is the one we want. We can double check that though by looking at the feature plots. So this is that same tree uh, with the, the node of interest that contains this you know, um, dis discriminating feature um, highlighted. So you can see this node, which was the B cells, the phosphorus 6 median of this node is, is the single strongest predictor of which group of a sample would go into. And if you want to see the FDR constrained, there's all these different, uh, all these different pages of uh, FDR constrained results. And then lastly, um, we have this uh, features plot. Well, there's the, there's the, the, uh, the box plots too, um, but this features um, is uh, basically just the values of all of the, uh, the FDR constrained uh, clusters across all of our samples or you know, a CV min or a CV1 SC, it's up to you to which one you want to see. But you can take these now and do further statistical analysis on that if you'd like. So that's what the results of uh, a, uh, a citrus look like um, in real life. And uh, with that, uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope you uh, write in with any questions uh, you have um, or uh, um, Definitely let us know um, if you'd like uh, to see any improvements to, to this or to other uh, pieces of Cytobank. We're uh, happy to hear your feedback. Thanks again.